Paleontologist Jenny Clack has spent her career in passionate pursuit of the first of our relatives to walk out of the water. I study the, the earliest tetrapods, and tetrapods are creatures with four legs and fingers and toes on the end of them. And I'm also looking at the transition that those animals made from living in the water to living on land. It's every paleontologist's dream to find a transitional form, something that falls between two groups that we're familiar with, sort of links them both in its anatomy and also in how we think it lived. When we first collected it, we suspected that we'd got something exciting because we could see lumps in the rock, suggesting that there was more to the specimen than met the eye. And we could see across cracks, suggesting that there were things inside waiting to come out. Because when we fetched it from the field, most of this surface was covered with rock. It's had to be dug out bit by bit. Clack and her associate, Sarah Finney, have studied this one remarkable fossil for years. It was a fish-like animal with limbs. Well, what have we been working on today? We've been working on neural arches. The same kind of structures that would eventually carry us onto land. This is a specimen I call Boris, and it really could be described as a missing link, except that here we have it. It's a transitional form between animals with fins that we would call fish and animals with legs, with fingers and toes on the end that we call tetrapods. We are tetrapods. Boris walked a fine line between being a fish and being a new kind of animal. If we look at the back of the skull here, there's a rod-like structure here and here. And if we turn the skull over, you can see grooved rods. And that means that there was an artery running up that groove, feeding the gills blood so that the blood could be oxygenated. And that factor suggests that the animal was still using gills to breathe. It would have had lungs anyway, because most of these early fish did. But this animal was using both gills and lungs, unlike later tetrapods, where the gills are lost. With both gills and lungs, it could breathe oxygen in water and air. Boris displays evolution in mid-process, even though this species disappeared. I like to understand the animals. I like to know what went on, and I suppose one of the greatest frustrations for people like me is that you can't simply get into a time machine and turn it back to the Devonian and go and have a look. I'll never know what color its eyes were for instance, but it, it's trying to understand what the animals were doing and what life was like back all those millions of years ago. Valencia Island, off the southwest coast of Ireland, actually is like a time machine for Clack. Primeval footprints have been discovered here on the island, the marks of some of the earliest footfalls. Clack has spent decades deciphering fossils. Now, for the first time, she makes a pilgrimage to see if the early footprints can reveal the way our first limbed ancestors walked. And then here's another one which is rather different, differently spaced. And then you've got a whole trail going out across the platform there. Okay, what's the measurement across there? The identity of the animal who walked here remains a mystery. Okay, yep, got that. But its abundant tracks allow Clack to speculate on what it was doing on this patch of mud one day, millions of years ago. 23.5. Okay. So it's pretty amazing this actually. Which direction do you think the animal was traveling in? I think it was coming out from under there and coming out around here and going out that way. So we've got a whole sweep coming 
right from over there, round and going off into the distance there. And, and, and do you think it was in shallow water or...? Well, I think these animals would have been definitely sort of semi-aquatic, using the water for support. Mm. So I think the water is supporting the body and it's kind of poling itself along. There's also, there's no body scrape. But in order to make such deep impressions, the sediment must have been pretty wet and waterlogged. Mm. This is like a, a kind of action replay of an instant in time about 370 million years ago. And it actually shows us what an animal was doing at that time. These small steps are the marks of a great revolution for life on Earth. Our ancestors had arrived on land. And for the first time, our family album contained creatures that could crawl, walk, or run along the water's edge. Now we have a very much more detailed story about vertebrate evolution than could ever have been imagined by Darwin. He would have been completely delighted to see what was going on. <laughs> 